Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Powell County hosted a prayer vigil for the death of a one year old last night. And spring cleaning comes sooner than some of us might want to admit, but that doesn't stop this work release program from helping Eastern Kentucky. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The Powell County community continues to grieve. One year old Keegan Haddix died on Tuesday after a fire destroyed her family's home last week. Family, first responders, and some city leaders gathered to pray in Clay City. Grayson Passmore was there and tells us how the community is leaning on each other and their faith. Unfortunately, God saw fit on the 12th to take our little baby girl. On March 8th, a fire tore through this Powell County home. Austin Haddix and three of his children were inside at the time, including one-year-old Keegan. Kiki was found with no heartbeat, and first responders resuscitated her on the scene. She was rushed to UK Hospital, where this little girl put up a big fight for days. Being a mother when your child is hurt, your first thing to do is fix that hurt. This is a hurt that I cannot fix for my baby girl. Kiki was born on March 17th. You know, she was our St. Patty's Day baby. She was our lucky charm. Now her grandmother, Michelle Brown, says they'll bury their baby the day before she should have turned two. I'd look at her and I'd say, are you Nana's baby? Are you Nana's girl? And no, no, no. And I know that when my time comes and I reach those pearly gates myself, She's going to look at me from the other side of them gates, and she's going to welcome me by looking at me and going, no, 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 Nana. Brown says they've received donations and prayers from people around this community and from states away. So right now, the family will hold on tightly to their faith and to each other. Just like this wind right here, that's my baby girl, letting Nana know, hey, I'm okay. In Clay City, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Brown says Grayson Funeral Home is covering the cost. Keegan Haddock's funeral services, they are still accepting donations to help her daughter, son-in-law, and their four children find a new home. One man was flown to a hospital after a crash involving a school bus and a motorcycle yesterday in Perry County. The crash happened on the intersection of Kentucky 15 and Kentucky 28. Police say nobody on the bus was hurt, but the man on the motorcycle was flown to UK Hospital. His name and condition is not known. The Perry County School Bus was taking 33 kindergarten to 12th grade Buckhorn students home from AB Combs. It's unclear what led to the crash. A Southern Kentucky Circuit Court clerk has been removed from office by the Kentucky Supreme Court. Joseph J.S. Flynn is suspended amid some allegations by his staff. The Supreme Court released a 20-page opinion and documents detailing numerous allegations involving a hostile work environment, allegations of sexual misconduct and harassment. Flynn was removed from office, but he had been suspended with pay. Severe weather hit parts of Kentucky hard yesterday. Governor Bashir says tornadoes touched down in Gallatin and Trimble counties and possibly in Carroll County. Thousands of people lost power. This is video from Trimble County where several homes were damaged. No deaths and only minor injuries have been reported. Lawmakers wasted no time yesterday discussing House Bill 5. Thursday right at 9 a.m., Democrats from both the House and Senate chambers spoke with reporters to express their concerns with the legislation, which they say would criminalize homelessness and increase the number of incarcerated Kentuckians. After the news conference, the Senate Judiciary Committee passed House Bill 5, which now goes on to the full state Senate. It is crucial that the public and legislators understand the potential harmful beginnings, our effects, our impact of this legislation. We do have a crime problem in Kentucky. 
House Bill 5 was passed by the Senate Judiciary Committee. It passed by a vote of 7 to 3. Notably, committee chairman Senator Whitney Westerfield voted no. He said he would provide an explanation for his vote on the Senate floor. Governor Andy Bashir hosted a Team Kentucky update yesterday. In that update, some of the highlights were upgrades for parks and recreation spaces throughout Kentucky. There were 32 projects selected, and the projects will receive a total of nearly $4 million. Governor Bashir also says KSP seized more than $4.8 million in drugs for the month of February, which was accompanied by nearly 240 drug-related arrests. Spring cleaning for many of us is quite a daunting task, but it is also important. And the Kentucky River Gel Work Release Program, along with several other community leaders and members, are taking on the job of spring cleaning our communities. Yesterday, I was able to travel to Buckhorn, where everyone involved was doing their part. The Kentucky River Regional Gel Work Release Program is something jeller Minor Allen says is focused on making the Kentucky River region a better place. We'll work anywhere from, from 8 to 12 inmates uh, out to, uh, you know, trying to make our communities better. And, you know, they do things that uh, most other people uh, can't do or won't do. So uh, that's, that's why I like doing it and just making things uh, better than we found it. While the work release program cleaned up along the roads on Thursday, this was the site at Buckhorn School. Approximately 20 Buckhorn athletes and staff members picking up trash as well. Something athletic director Christy Combs says is important for them to be a part of. We're not only just doing uh, sports and, and things in the school, but we want to give back to our community as well because they give so much to us. So every opportunity that we get, we uh, try to get out and, and make face out and show our kids that it's always an important thing to give to everybody in our community. Saying this partnership between the schools and the Kentucky River Regional Gel is special. And for the students, it might mean even more. It means a lot. Buckhorn's a, it's a small place, but we're all a family, so it's, it means a lot. This is a good thing to do, just be out there and help clean up, help any way we can. Just try and get back on our school as fast as possible. Taking the time to do some spring cleaning, while also making a difference in their school and community. Allen says their goal is to begin picking up trash in communities most heavily damaged by the July 2022 flood and encourages the community to get out and help do the same. And a good Friday to you. A damp start, but a mild start to our Friday. We're sitting in the mid 50s outside our studios and our headlines this morning, aerial coverage regarding the steady and heavy activity has continued to decrease. We're going to maintain the shower threat, though, into this evening. The steadiest of action will be right along the Kentucky-Tennessee border, can, uh, basically from Harlan County over toward Wayne and Whitley counties. And then we got a 50-50 weekend on tap before we got to deal with some cold air. Yes, a blast of cold air coming in to start us off next week. Temps right now, <laughs> enjoy it. These temps are actually going to be warmer than what you may see on Monday. I know, I know. It's still spring. It's still March in Kentucky. Here's the pinpoint Doppler radar again from Jackson and Hazard. Points south and east. This is where we find the showers more widespread leaving Pike County and making your way into the Virginias. Yeah, make your way down toward the Tennessee border. Ride back to the west along the border. Switching vantage points on the radar as well. And you see the steady stuff from Monticello over toward Barberville, point south, as you make your way into Tennessee. All right, here's the hour by hour forecast as we get you through your Friday. Scattered showers, perhaps a thunder shower or two. That could include a heavier burst of rain. And a forecast high as we make our way through this afternoon in Hazard up to 67. It'll be cooler up toward Moorhead, Lexington, and Danville. Highs your way closer to 60. More about the first alert seven day forecast and how cold for Monday? We'll let you know in just a few moments. Olivia. 
Thank you, Tim, and thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, dangerous storms slam the country as tornadoes hit the Midwest and snow in the Rockies.